Short intro because I have lots to do. I'm Anna and I have a bunch of items that I'm going to turn into awesome gifts with my Cricut. And I'm not only using one method. I am starting with a simple vinyl transfer, but I'm also going to be using HTV, ironing on wood, clothes, making a stencil, just trying to keep it interesting and fun. Now to my computer. To add cute phrases to mugs, you don't need an image. All you need to do is pick out a cute font and type it out. You can be extra creative by mixing up font styles and colors. It's all weeded and ready to transfer. First thing I need to do is wipe down my mug with some alcohol. The mug is clean, but I just really want to make sure the surface doesn't have anything on it that will stop my lovely phrase from sticking. Just a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And I want it to be on, when I'm holding my mug, I want it to be right here. So that's the side I'm gonna wipe down. The mug's ready. And in the comments, people have been telling me that they like to use the Dollar Tree contact paper, the clear one, as their transfer paper. So I've had some and I've never tried it. So I thought this would be a good project to try it on. The things are like my image is small, so if I have to redo it, it's not like I'm losing a lot of vinyl. So let's see how this clear, transparent magic cover works as transfer paper. Love it. Finally. Whew. Okay. Even though this is funny and cute, it's not dishwasher safe. So make sure you tell that to the person you give it to. As for the contact paper from Dollar Tree, it's, I like how easily it comes off, but because it comes off so easily, the letters didn't, like the image, the vinyl didn't want to stick in the first place. I kind of really had to fight to get it on. Maybe if it wasn't as tiny, as fine of words, I'm going to give it another try, but mm, it was a little bit of a struggle, but I'll give it another go. I'm giving it a, a six out of 10 right now. My next gift project is also using vinyl, is just much bigger. I ordered this off of Amazon and it's a great little buy. For $20, you get a 16 by 12 magnetic whiteboard and the other side is a chalkboard. And it comes with magnets, markers, an eraser, and clips to hang it. I'm impressed. I want to customize the whiteboard into a checklist, but I don't have an image. So I'm going to make one in the Cricut design space. So the first thing I'm going to do is make my little tick boxes. So I'm going to click on shapes, grab a square, and I'm going to make this square one and a half inches. And then I'm going to duplicate it because I want this to be a checkbox. Just so I can see it clearer, I'm going to color this one white and then change the size just to one inch. There we go. And it's hard to figure out the center really well, so just highlight everything, go to your align, and then center align. It's perfect. Okay, but this won't cut out like a, like a little checkbox, so I need to highlight and slice. So now I can take out all my pieces, and then I have a little checkbox and two extra, so I'll just delete those. I have my little checkbox, which is really cute. And I need a line because I want to be able to check off what is being done, but I also want a line to write down what was supposed to be done. So let's grab shapes again, another square, and let's make 
Let's unclick the lock so we can make it whatever size we want. I'm going to make it mm, go 10 inches wide, but I want it to match the box. The little checkbox, I'm going just a quarter inch. And there we go. See, you can write on here and it all matches. I just want to line it up really nice. Well, I want a little smaller. So the whole width of that is just over 11 inches, great. And I want to make sure this is nice and aligned, so back to our align, and I'm going to bottom align. Perfect. Now let's just um, attach those. So now they're a set, and I'm going to need several of them. I have a 12 inch page, so let's see how many I can fit on a 12 inch page, just by duplicating. So we're nice and even, and this is 12 inches, so I can get one, two, three, four, five checks on here. Cute. So, and let's attach them all. And now let's make it perfectly aligned. Everything looks so good. Okay, continue and cut. I'm going to give the Dollar Tree paper another chance. I trimmed it down to size, so now it actually fits. Ooh, this is a big transfer. Mm. Dollar Tree transfer paper is working much better this time. The lines are thicker, so maybe that's just the trick. Perfect. Now I just have to make a title. another completed gift project. And I love how it turned out. This is really cute. Now, because this is something I made in Design Space, I didn't have to buy an SVG, it's something I made myself. So it's completely customizable. You can make the squares as big or as small as you want them. If you make them smaller, you can have more of them. You can change this to say groceries or to do or whatever. This one happens to be for a forgetful little boy. So it's just things to remind him to get done before going to school in the morning but you can customize it to whatever you want. And then look, the little pegs, the little, look how cute they are. They just go right in your little squares. Mm. I think this is adorable. There, and my eraser. Oh gosh, I can even throw in a pencil. There, ta-da. I love how this turned out. Let's change it up by turning up the heat of the iron. And that's because I'm corny and because I'm going to be using HTV vinyl, the iron-on kind, I don't have any fancy gadgets for this. I just use my household iron, the one that I iron my clothes with, and it's set between cotton and linen. I have a towel and a piece of parchment paper. Not fancy at all. First, I iron the item both to remove the wrinkles and to warm up the fabric. Position your image, and remember, you can move it around as much as you like. Once you're happy with the position, cover it with the parchment paper. Press with your iron for 10 to 15 seconds. Don't jiggle, just press down. Movement can smudge the warm vinyl. I'm saying that from experience. This is Sizer Easyweed HTV, so I can peel it hot. Remember to check your peel temperature. It actually really matters. If the image isn't adhering, just press again for another five seconds. Now this is cute. And I have three more to go. So time for a time lapse? So at this point, I've used HVT quite a bit. I've ironed on several different things, different shirts, pillows, kitchen things. I've used it quite a bit, but it still blows my mind that I can make something that looks this good at my own house with just an iron. And yes, I did pick orange because orange is my favorite color. I could have gone with whatever color Raphael is because that is Ralph's real name, but um, orange, because it's my favorite color. Chris, I hope you love these as much as I do. And now I have another something that I'm going to iron on. And it's something I've never done before, and it's a material that I've never used before. Like, the actual material that I'm ironing on I've never used before, so I'm hoping I don't melt it. This is a laundry hamper, and I picked it up from Costco. I actually ordered it online, and it's really big. For the price, I was expecting it to be smaller, but I guess for Costco, I should have thought better. But it has this, um, like, a waterproof fabric on it, and I've never have ever even tried to do any ironing on on like a waterproof fabric 
but I did just try ironing it off camera and it, nothing happened. So I'm hoping I can iron on a little name on here so we know whose this is. So I've cut out a name to personalize this laundry hamper with. This is a great idea for your kids or for maybe a kid going away to university and you just want something that, you know, that's my, that's my dirty laundry. You don't have to touch that. So that's what I'm doing with this one. Now, it does say Nautica on the front and I did think about doing the name on the back. I just don't like the seam. So I'm still gonna do it on the front and I'm just gonna be a little bit careful with the fabric when I'm ironing it even though I did try ironing it and it was okay I'm going to iron to smooth it out and heat it with the parchment paper in place just just so I don't ruin it because it is really nice so let's put the name on it persuasion. I don't know whether it's because it was uneven. It could have been that, but I feel like maybe it's more so the fabric because it is water repellent. So maybe it was repelling the adhesion, like this glue on the back. I don't know, but I did press over and over and over and it seems to stuck. And I love how it turned out. Like that's really cute. So when you open it all up, ta-da, you know, it's your dirty laundry. So yes, even on weird fabric, it still works. Of all the things I've done with iron-on vinyl, my the thing that I just love how it turns out the most, like man, I love those shirts, like that looks great. But what I really love is when you iron on onto wood. There's just something, it looks so professional, it looks so store-bought. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. I have a lot of weeding because I have all these tiny little phrases to put onto these four coasters. So a lot of weeding and then, these are gonna look so good. My little coasters here aren't really real wood. It's some kind of a wood product, but I did test. I did iron for like 20 seconds over one of the sides to make sure nothing happened. Nothing did melt, so we're good to go. So I treat wood just like it's, I don't know, any fabric. We're just going to, I don't preheat the wood because I feel like it'll stay nice and warm. So that's the only part I don't do the same, but I'm just gonna line up my HTV, my iron-on decal here. Move these out of the way. Oh, these are so cute and funny. Whoever came up with the idea of ironing on onto wood, it's a genius. Like this just looks so good. Oh, and these are gonna be a hit. So that's it, just iron on wood, just like you would on anything else. And it turns out awesome. I have a tumbler here with rather messy vinyl on it. And that's because I want to etch off the paint or the finish that's on this water cooler to reveal the silver that's underneath. And I'm going to do that with citrus strip. So I put this on yesterday and that's because her name is Chris. I'm like 46% sure her name was Chris and she had a great video on this, which I will have linked below because I think you should give credit where credit is due. And I apologize if your name's not Chris. So she says to put the vinyl template on a day early. So you let it sit for 24 hours and that way it starts to bond or cure a bit better to your material, to your surface. And that way you don't get bleed through as much. First step after this is sat for 24 hours, you apply heat to everything, especially like corners right here where they're lifted. You can see how that's kind of has like a bump. We're going to um, add the heat. So then I can push that down and make a really clean edge there. That totally smoothed out right here around the D. That lump is gone, so that's awesome. And then I had a little bit here around the O, just the bottle does get pretty hot, but we're ready to move on. Next, I'm gonna add some painter's tape, just in case I get a little messy. I did cut slits on the sides, just so I can wrap it better. So 
those kind of separated a bit, I'm gonna cover those up for sure. Just so I don't have weird etch lines. Looking good. Okay, so now is the etching part. So I'm going to apply the scissor strip and I'll probably leave it for 45 minutes, maybe half hour. I'm just gonna go away, do something else. And I'm gonna come back and keep checking it. Once I start seeing the paint, the actual blue paint underneath, start bubbling up, then I know we're ready to move on. So first, let's apply some citrus strip. And wear gloves to protect yourself. The reason I'm dabbing instead of painting on, like paint strokes, is so I don't force it underneath, just to make sure I get nice, crisp, clean lines. So just make sure you've covered up all that you want etched, and that's it. This part's really easy. It looks like I have a good coverage. All my letters are covered. I'm just going to leave it now and come back in half an hour, take a look at it. If I don't see any bubbling, I'll wait another 15 minutes. I'm just gonna keep doing that until the paint is all nice and bubbly. Oh dear, the battery on my mic died. So here's voiceover on it to explain. You'll need paper towels and a pretty wet rag, not like a good one, something you don't really care about, and gloves. I waited an hour and a half and the paint started bubbling, so it's ready to be removed. First, wipe off the excess citrus strip with paper towel. It's so cool to see that this actually works. Then wipe your design down with the wet rag. I switched to a toothpick and gently rubbed off the rest of the paint. I do mean gently, it takes no effort. Once the design is revealed, peel off the vinyl. This part takes more effort than removing the paint. It's done and it looks good. You wanna see it? Look at that. The edges are just as crisp or crisper than if I had made a stencil and painted it. And the best part, this is permanent. Like I've removed the paint and it's just the silver underneath. Oh, the hardest part, honestly, is just getting your image straight because mine's crooked a little. That really is the hardest part. You just have to make sure you follow the steps. Put your vinyl on a day before, let it sit for a whole day, then he apply some heat and smooth out any of your edges, make sure they're crisp. Put your citrus strip on, wait till the bubbles, and then scrape it off or rub it off, whichever. I found the toothpick was pretty easy. And then just wash it. Is there anything a cricket can't do? I was thinking, since this is a Christmas video, maybe I should do something kind of Christmassy. So I'm going to start with these ornaments that I picked up from Michaels. And I cut out some snowflakes in gold with my Cricut. But I was thinking a gold snowflake on a clear ornament, that's kind of boring. So let's have some paint fun. This one I did earlier and I used two shades of pink and one white. But now I want to add some gold. It's just acrylic paint and you pour it in and you shake it up. Now, this is a fun project, it's really easy. You could do it with kids. I mean, it might get a little messy, but it's just acrylic paint, it washes out. Oh, first, shake and prep all your little containers of paint, and now just pour the paint right inside. Try to pour it as straight down as you can. I did glob it on the side, and that kind of just sticks with that one color just on the side. So, you can start with any color you want. It doesn't really matter, I just want my bottom to be pink, I guess. So I'm gonna start with pink. And try to get straight down. Oh, I did it. So I just kinda covered just the bottom with some pink. And now I'm just going to layer all my other colors. I'm gonna use just a little bit of the gold. I don't wanna go too, too gold. And now my white, which is already dripping. I don't know exactly how much paint you're supposed to add, but the more is the merrier, right? So let's add some more. I'm gonna layer some more pink on top. See right there, I got it just down the side. That's what you don't want to do. So now I'm gonna have that pink streak stuck there. Oops. And now just start swirling it. You can thin out your paint for a more swirled look with M1 or even some Floetrol, but I thought this worked out all right. And I just, I like tapping it, it kind of gives it like a, more of a, I don't know, aggressive look. Ooh, the gold is giving such good swirls. Oh, that looks so good. Now I am going to need to drain out all the paint. So I made up this little, I don't, know, I don't even know what to call this thing. It's two strips of tape over a plastic cup. And I 
left like a little bit of a gap in the middle, just enough to fit in my ornament. And now you can either have it tipped or you can support it so it's straight up. And now gravity is gonna work and it's just gonna pull out all of the paint. And while it's doing that, kind of drags it and gives it a really cool design. This is the one I did earlier and I love how that turned out. Like you can just see the drags and the different paint colors. It just looks really good. And if you're like, oh, I kind of missed a spot here later on, you can add more paint. And uh, that's it. Really cute ornaments with, I mean, it's really simple. These, some of these are from the dollar store, some are from Michael's Ace Paints, but it's just acrylic paint. And you can really use any paint. You can use wall paint. Uh, I've seen people use spray paint. Pretty much just get the paint in there, swirl it around and let it drip out. That's it. My first Cricut was a Christmas gift from my sister-in-law, but Cricuts have come so far since then. Like, do you remember before we had like the cartridges and you'd put them all in and you could only do whatever was on those cartridges? Now we have SVGs, SVGs. I don't know if SVGs even existed back then. I mean, they probably did. I'm just not like cutting edge technology wise. So I didn't know about them, but now you can do so much and it seems like Whenever like, you think about it, there's always like a new way of doing something with the Cricut. Like ironing onto wood or using the citrus strip on the tumbler. There's just so many cool things to do. So this holiday, I hope you've been inspired to try something really creative with your Cricut. I wish you a very Merry Christmas, the happiest of holidays, and happy crafting. See you soon with another project. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You can't hear me. Why can't you hear me? <gasps> okay. This is on and it's paired. Okay. That means it should be working. And here, the numbers are all right. Everything looks good. This is, it's just you're not displaying. You little bugger. Very likely. Just like that. I have to drink this, it's getting cool. Can I eat, uh, no, I'll leave the tea bag in. <laughs> I've got stuff to do, no joking around.